Salutations! Welcome to Loving the Language of Literacy. My name is Sophia Lee, and today I finally made up my mind. Around a month ago, I posted a video concerning my indecision on poetry versus fiction. As you probably know, I go to writing class every Saturday, and a new session has started, so I had to choose between the two genres. I finally chose one after a ton of deliberation, including the actual class period where we had to stand up, introduce ourselves, you know, the usual icebreaker kind of thing, and I deliberated even while I was up there, so gave everyone a good show with my weirdness. Anyways, I'm kind of lying in this video because I made up my mind over a month ago, and um, I just never got around to filming a video for the very first fiction class, which I'm sincerely apologetic about. I never got around to it, and there just wasn't enough solid material, and just no inspiration on my behalf. But today, I'm here to talk about week two of fiction writing and the first fiction video you will see, and probably only one of like three or four because <laughs> Life gets in the way, parents want to take you to Shakespeare, and you have running camp, so instead, you're missing out on a ton of fiction. I will, of course, have next session where there will be more indecision on poetry versus fiction, so there will probably be a video for that one, too. This is probably going to be the fastest turnaround I've ever had for a video, or actually been made to have, because I am leaving for camp in something like less than 12 hours, and I have to film, edit, and upload this video, and the description box, and the thumbnail, and everything else that entails making a video before I go to sleep. Luckily, I'm all packed. I just snapchatted a while back about my room. It was absolute hell. I had sports bras and shorts strewn across my room because Running camp entails a lot of athletic gear. Today, Mr. Alaco focused on dialogue, and dialogue is a huge part, obviously, of fiction. It helps enhance characters, the scene, and enrich everything. But it also felt a ton like playwriting, which I kept remarking on, and I think Mr. Alaco thought I was just really weird because of that. He probably thought I should belong in playwriting instead, but whatever. In playwriting, there was so much focus on dialogue because that was the only thing you had besides meager st stage instructions. And we kind of had the same principle today, which was odd, but also very entertaining, and I enjoyed it quite a lot. Mr. Alaco started off by telling us a few basic tips around dialogue. I'm going to be doing the same general format I did for my past writing videos where I talk about what I learned and then shared what we wrote in class. And today's is really entertaining. The first thing about dialogue, which I actually have never been told before in any of my English classes or at school or my research on writing itself, but that was that using said is not the death of your writing and people actually prefer it. And I was given an extremely interesting perspective that I'd never heard of before and I'm going to start utilizing it because I believe that my teacher is correct, unlike a lot of times, and it just makes a lot of sense. The main guideline for that is don't use use too many adverbs. As you know, adverbs are words that end with L-Y, and it's like, he said slowly, he said moaning, which that's not an adverb, but it's another thing you shouldn't use, because it draws attention from what's being spoken, and when you're using dialogue, you want the words to speak for themselves, and you don't want to have extra words trying to so-called enhance or improve what you're already saying, because it should speak for itself. You should sound natural when you're writing dialogue and listen to people's conversations, but it also should be a different kind of realistic without being completely 100% genuine, because there are so many just pauses in speech we use while in conversation. For example, I have to already edit out a ton of ands, buts, ums, and anyways, in my videos, and I do it a lot in real life, well, I can't edit those out. You notice it, but you aren't really bothered with it in videos themselves. But, especially in books, you're going to notice it, and you're going to think the author is a total imbecile. Dialogue should most definitely reveal character. Don't make your characters sound stereotypical, but at the same time, make them distinguishable. So, even if there weren't dialogue tags, and what I learned today was the dialogue tags are obviously the quotation marks, as well as whatever form of said you are actually using. So, you should make them distinguishable now. So, if you just knew their lines of dialogue, you might have some indication as to which character is speaking. The gist of what I'm trying to say is that dialogue is merely an extension of your character. It's another characteristic like a blonde hair and blue eyes, and it's just an extremely important part of the writing process and your work in general. Something you might want to try to enhance your dialogue and just get to know your character in general is write a journal entry or interview them and have them answer in their point of view. Because in your head, they're going to talk the way that they talk, whether they hesitate while answering or have long lengthy ones or short to the point ones. Anything you do will indicate character. The last two things to keep in mind while writing dialogue is number one, it is there for a reason. It should move the story forward, whether it's just revealing character or helping the plot along. But no matter what you write, no matter what you say as your dialogue, and of course there are always exceptions, 
it has to have a purpose. If you're just saying, hi, how are you doing? And if it's not relevant to the story somehow, cut it out. And the second thing you have to keep in mind is that proper punctuation is needed unless you're someone famous like JK Rowling and you can do whatever the heck you want. I have a lovely dialogue tips and formatting guide. Thank you Mr. Alaka for that. And we basically just went over the guidelines, the three general structures of dialogue and sentence structure. With dialogue tags included, something I learned today, I already knew it in the back of my mind but just had it put into words, is that the dialogue tags are just simply part of the sentence itself. Even if you're saying, he said, comma, quotation mark, you're the one being a brat, period, quotation mark, or quotation mark, you're so mature, comma, quotation mark, the girl said, period. And then you might know the example where it's like, quotation mark, well, comma, quotation mark, he said, quotation mark, I have to go to the store, period, quotation mark, that is still one fluid sentence. And the dialogue tags are just a part of that sentence. Some other notes about speech tags are the fact that not every piece of dialogue requires a speech tag. You may have seen those kinds of conversations in novels where it's back and forth rapid fire between two characters and they don't need he said, he, she said, he said, she said because it's tedious and you already know that these are the two specific characters talking. And generally avoid them whenever possible and use them the least amount you can. And my last tip for dialogue is that do not use all caps to stress words in dialogue or in writing in general. It's unprofessional, even though JK Rowling did it. Um, just use italics instead. Something that a lot of young writers, myself included, make the mistake of is do not use multiple question marks or exclamation points unless it's absolutely crucial to the character and even then avoid as much as possible because it makes you seem unprofessional. Moving on to what we actually did in class, we read a little piece of flash fiction called I Didn't Do It by Tom Hazuka, which is apparently part of an anthology of flash fiction pieces. As you can see, it's super short. We just analyzed whether these characters were lying and the backstory behind it and how it felt like there was a lot of build up before that we didn't hear about but it still made sense nonetheless. And I really appreciated this because we didn't do this so much in poetry and we didn't do this so much in playwriting either but we really had a solid discussion between the, it was only three of us kids in class today and Mr. Alaco, but nonetheless really fun and I really appreciated the in-depth discussion we had. He also brought in this bad dialogue and slightly better dialogue and it's basically showing what you should and should not do. The same principle for both exchanges of three sentences each but with a lot more characterization and development and a lot more just context in general behind it. This is the bad dialogue. Good morning James, it's nice to see you again. Thank you Lisa, you as well. How have you been? I've been very well lately, thank you. And you? Obviously you know nothing about these people besides their names are Lisa and James and they're seeing each other. You know, whatever. And this is the slightly improved version which is actually shorter but a lot more helpful to the reader. Morning. Hey, how's things? Oh, you know, just being things. You see my binder anywhere? As you can see, while there's not more said in terms of quantity, there is definitely more said in terms of the context you get as a reader. I actually asked Mr. Loco a question in pertinence to my current work in progress. I'm going to have a whole video about that later. My question was basically, how do you sneak in things like action as well as backstory while there's a big conversation going on between characters? Because obviously you don't want it all a dialogue and that gets boring and you feel like they're not doing anything, even if they're just sitting there. But he gave me a few tips. So one thing is to make the setting interesting and spritz in here and there little details about it. Make it just intricate and give it a feeling to it because as you know when you walk into any sort of room there's a feeling no matter how bland it is and if it's bland then that's something to remark on. Also if it's a conversation with multiple characters make sure that the quiet one or just one that doesn't get as much page time does not disappear completely and we don't forget about them as a reader. Lastly it's a personal preference but don't add too much backstory into your dialogue and it's much better to just put that in just in the character or just the general narrator's writing itself and not in the dialogue. Now I will be reading you what we actually worked on in class. We worked as a group and I quite enjoyed it even though I was a bit hesitant at first but it turned out really fun really well. Originally this was going to be a partner activity but because there were only three people he modified it for the sake of just three people being there and what happened was each of us was assigned a character and then we passed around a notebook writing down in a line of dialogue with no dialogue tags whatsoever and we just went off it from what the character said. The first character was written by Thomas. He was a shop owner and he was usually nice and cut a lot of deals for people because this was just an antique store 
and he gave them whatever price that he wanted to give them. And then there was a stingy business partner written by moi, of course, and they were stern, less friendly, and upset with the shop owner for giving these customers so many cuts. And then finally there was the customer played by Emma. Yes, I know I mentioned so many Emmas in my videos, but this is a fiction Emma. She was broke, desperate, and for some reason only had $8, but the item she wanted to buy was 15 And this was just such a fun scene to write. I'd really like to buy this ring. My mother lost one just like this a long time ago, and it would mean a lot to me. Aw, how sweet. That'll be $15. We take all major credit cards. We prefer checks that don't bounce. Oh, $15? Really? I only have $8 in cash. It's only a few dollars less. Please, can I have it for $8? Robert! Don't even think about it. I'm sorry, ma'am, but this is an established business here. We don't do handouts. Now, now, Xanthippe, can you make an exception? This obviously would mean a lot to this kind-looking gentleman. Let me see, I have one, two, three quarters. Eight dollars and seventy-five cents? Robert, would you like to be the downfall of a store that's been in my family for five generations? Oh, come now, all's with the theatrics, but I'm sure we can come to an understanding. How attached are you with that shirt of yours? My shirt? Well, it's the only one I have. I have been unemployed for a long time, and everything I had was stolen by some people I thought were my friends. But enough about that. Will my shirt and my money pay for the ring? Because if so, you can have them. Oh, I suppose, and keep your shirt. Robert, that 625 is coming out of your pay. Would you like a bag for the ring? It was a different kind of day of fiction, both with the number of people in class as well as the activity, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. Tell me in the comments below if you would like to learn more about fiction, or what you'd like to hear about, plot, dialogue, character development, the works, and tell me if you're working on anything at the moment. Anyways, keep calm, read on, and I'll see you in a video soon. Goodbye! If you enjoyed watching me ramble on and on and on about writing, hit the thumbs up button as well as leave a comment if you want. And if you would like to, hit the subscribe button for more videos. The, all my social media is around my face at SSL Loves Books, and my previous videos are below me. Fiction or pl I was a playwriting.